Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life. I'm joined by Trey Van Camp. Trey is a vlogger, uh, which he has some awesome video skills and amazing drone skills. Dude, keep it up. Thanks, um, man. He's also a pastor and a church planner. So, mm -hmm. Trey, you want to tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, what's up, man? First of all, I totally love your content. Um, by the way, are you a designer? Like, you're, you're like, I love your whole layout on your channel. Yeah, yeah, um, I, 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 I do graphic and web design, too. Dude, yeah. killing it, man. I do web design, too, but man, you're really good. Okay, I just wanted Thanks, to throw man. that out there. Also, you nailed the Trinity yesterday really good. I watched your video you uploaded. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, okay, Thanks, so man. I'm yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, my story. Yeah, my full name is William Trey Lamar Van Camp the Third. It's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm from uh, Queen Creek, Arizona, and that's actually where I planted my church. Nice. Um, so it's pretty much just in the outer Phoenix area, East Valley. Um, yeah. So I'm a fourth generation pastor. So it goes up the line quite a lot. Every single one warned me, and yet God still called me. So. Right. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I So I grew up in the church. I actually got saved when I was six years old, like literally right when I turned six. Um, I, I actually, basketball is a huge part of my life. Well, at least it was. And so I was actually out shooting hoops on my own in my uh, backyard. And then I just, the Holy Spirit was just convicting me of my sin. And so I went into my house and said, Hey mom, I want to believe in Jesus. And she got all excited and brought me through a little, you know, one of those tracks and made yeah. sure I had to get questioned cause I was so young, you know? And so, uh, the cool thing that I'll uh, forever cherish is my grandfather, uh, got to baptize me, um, who's a pastor. And yeah. so, uh, really, really special moment for me. Fast forward, there's obviously a lot, but actually the, another big critical moment for me in my life, uh, in my spiritual journey, when I was 12 years old, my father got everybody in the room together and said, hey, um, I just want to let you guys know God's calling me to plant a church. And we were shocked. My dad wasn't a pastor uh, at that time. He was just a deacon, a good Sunday school teacher, made a lot of money doing concrete. So our life was turned upside down. Uh, and so we wound up leaving our church home to go start a new one. And it was super hard. I was super right. plugged into my church. And then I went from having a big, uh, I was 12. So I was getting into the youth group. Right. So I right. couldn't wait. Right. You know, like you like can't wait for the youth group moments. Yeah. And then we move and I was the, me and my sister were the only ones in the youth group. And so that was a big shift for us. Um, but God was really good. Fast forward. Um, oh, actually, that night, he said, okay, I want you guys to do two things. One, I want you guys to serve the church. Like, I want this to be a family thing. But he said, two, I want you to start praying right now, asking God what your spiritual gift is, um, you know, as a believer, and really so you can start using those gifts. And so every single morning, every single night, I ask God, okay, God, re please reveal to me my spiritual gifts. And so one year later, have you ever done discipleship now? Um, I've heard about it. We haven't actually done it. I've been wanting to. Yeah. yeah. So we did a, yeah. a D now conference mm -hmm. and I went and uh, it was the last night preacher was preaching on first Kings 18, talking about Elijah standing up to the 450 prophets. There's actually 850 prophets there. And, um, and I just like never in my life, uh, have I heard it? I, I want to say it was an audible voice and it was um, the Holy spirit telling me, I've called you to do this for your generation. I've called you to stand up when nobody else will. And so he, um, I, I believe I received the calling to become a, a pastor, a preacher of God's word at that time when I was 13. And so I always take give, I always love sharing what happened when I was 12 because I prayed for this moment, right? right. It doesn't happen. And so I surrendered my life to ministries that day, the same day my little sister got saved, which was really cool. Wow. And uh, so ever since then, uh, my dad really has given me opportunity after opportunity um, to learn about from him about what ministry is like, yeah. um, because yeah. people are tough, that kind of thing. So he really let me in. Yeah. And I'm super thankful for that. Um, and then when I was, I'm going to fast forward. Oh, sorry, I don't know how much time you want. But oh, when, I was, go for it. <laughs> when I was 16 years old, uh, I actually got licensed to preach the gospel. So that just yeah, essentially yeah. means I can legally marry and bury people. But also nice. I can go to different churches and actually preach. And so um, that was my first sermon ever when I was 16 was one of the churches that my grandfather was pastor at. It was a Chinese church. 
My yeah. grandfather is not Chinese, <laughs> but <laughs> we're at a Chinese church, and uh, I, even with a interrupter, I mean an interpreter, uh, it was only 14 minutes long, and man, I was so proud, you know. Yes. And so, but then I was like, oh my gosh, and it was Easter Sunday when I was 16. And so, but God's been really gracious uh, since then. I got to preach at multiple places and able to work on my craft a little bit. Um, Actually, when I was 17, I started my own ministry called The Gathering. It was once a month. We met at our high school in our performing arts center. And we saw like between 100 and we saw uh, Mormons uh, come to faith in Jesus, atheists come to faith in Jesus. It was awesome. Uh, I think we baptized. Uh, we we led. We led thirty five to Christ uh, from December to May once a month. Like so, it was it was great. And then I graduated. Yeah. But then I went to California Baptist University, the California Baptist University, right. best <laughs> university on the planet. And uh, I got a degree, and it was focused on pastoral ministry. Uh, it's called the Bachelor of Applied Theology. There's only fifteen of us per year that they accept because they give a pretty good scholarship. So. That completely molded my mind uh, about, uh, you know, theology. Right. Uh, I thought I understood stuff. Now I'm like, I now I don't know anything, but I'm thankful <laughs> to not know that I know anything. And yeah. uh, it's just an incredible time. Um, I actually, even during college, I, I really entertained the thought of becoming a missionary. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was kind of a part of it. And now I'm realizing a big part of my heart is to send out missionaries as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. So we're uh, really close to a college. So we're pumped about that. Um, yeah, just really molding time for me. Graduated and um, actually got a sweet job offer uh, with Rick Warren. I was going to be his personal assistant. Oh, wow. And fly wherever he flies and all that kind of thing. And, and so I was in the middle of that interview and I was really anxious. And my wife is like, honestly, Trey, what do you want to do? Like if money weren't an issue during that time, my dad's church plant wasn't doing very well, especially financially. We actually, I had to sell my truck, uh, one summer to help us like eat that right. summer. And so we were, uh, in the struggle. And I said, honestly, if money weren't an issue, I'd love to go back home, help my dad for a little bit and start my own church. And so she's like, that's what we're going to do. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, you're right. So I declined, uh, the rest of the interview process went back home um, and yeah, became a youth uh, associate pastor for my dad for a year, helped with growth groups, kind of established that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started my own church. And uh, so that was actually, what's what's today? Two years ago, two days ago is when we launched. Wow. And so we just celebrated our two year anniversary. And really the heartbeat behind the church we planted is, uh, uh, we have three goals. We want to baptize a ton of people. Uh, we put that at the forefront. We want to, number two, we want to um, mobilize college students. So in other words, we want to take college students, use their marketable skill sets, engineers, nurses, teachers, and really let them see, and we have a lot of vets actually, and send them out and say, look, take the job in India, take the job in Thailand, right. share Jesus. You don't have to be a pastor, but we need normal people in the marketplace yeah sharing Jesus. So that's a big passion of mine. And then the third one is we want to, we're trying so hard to make our environment safe for LDS and atheists. Uh, Those are growing up. Those were always my best friends. Um, I I have compassion on them. I love them. And so that's something we're really big about. We meet in a movie theater. uh, So that helps with that. So it's uh, been a fun thing. Does that, does that help cover? Oh yeah. Another thing, YouTube, right? So you want to meet intro that? Okay, cool. Yeah, go for so, it. I talk too much, so let me know. But no, okay, YouTube. Uh, so growing up, I was always behind the camera for my dad because I'm like, Dad, we got to grow this church, you know, that we just planted. So let me take some video of you. It was terrible, just so bad. <laughs> uh, but I loved it. I, I started loving the editing process. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, so I did that a lot. And then uh, it was kind of uh, November, uh, November of of 2016, I all of a sudden found vlogging. Dude, I've never even, I, I've never seen vlogging before. I right. never, I thought YouTube was about cat videos. So I stayed away. I was like, YouTube stupid. Like I got stuff to do with my life, you know? And, right. uh, but then I saw Casey Neistat. That was the first vlog I've ever seen. And I was Casey's like, oh man. my gosh, like this is incredible. Yeah. So I took three weeks just watching as much of his content as possible. And then I would see like, you know, he would shout out other vloggers. So then I watched mm-hmm. theirs a little bit. 
And I was like, this is it. Like, I, this is what I want to do. Like this, I was pumped. So literally yeah. um, that January, so January of 2017, I went to Israel uh, for seven days. And I was like, this is the perfect time. Let's bring my camera around and go around Israel. Right. And then the rest is history. So it was kind of fun to go from this to pull it back and be in front of the yeah. camera. And uh, man, I've had a blast ever since. Right. It's been a lot of fun. Man, that's, that's awesome. And for the record, guys, you I will link uh, Trey's church's podcast and I guess your, your website, too. I'll link that down below. I've actually listened to several of your sermons, dude. You are truly oh, an anointed speaker. You really are. Oh, thanks, brother. Appreciate yeah, it. Uh, which I love. I'm, I'm a sermon junkie anyway. When other people have headphones and they're bro. listening to music, I got sermons going like 24-7. I watched your video about uh, top po- Christian podcasts. And I was yeah. like... Is he looking at my phone? These are all the people I love. I was like, these are the people I listen to. Yes, so, man. Right That's what, if, I'm always walking around in Walmart and stuff, and like, I'll run into my youth, and they're like, oh, what are you listening to? And I'm like, oh, you've never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Keller, he's a yeah, guy from Yeah, Tim you know, Tim. that guy. Yeah. 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 But, cool, man. Cool. Um, okay, so, we'll jump into the next question. Who would you say, I know you talked about your father there for a little bit, who would you say has influenced you the most in your faith? Yeah, so my dad and my grandfather by far, and I I really want that for every Christian. Like it'd be so great if it was your family. Yes. That was a huge influence. So uh, my grandfather taught me a lot about evangelism. Um, he was man a soul winner. Like literally, I think they still say, uh, especially. So I'm a Southern Baptist denomination. So okay. it's definitely within the SBC denomination. My grandfather's led more people to Jesus than like anybody else uh, oh, wow. in the state of. Arizona. It's incredible. Like yeah. I still run into people like at the airport and they're like, Hey, my, your grandfather baptized me. It's like, what? Like it's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. Uh, so yeah. he's super, like I, I would go to Suns games with him all the time yeah. and he would just share his faith to Jason Kidd and Amari Sotomayor and Steve Nash. I'm like, dude, just get an autograph. But like, right. he would just be at it, man. He had that yeah. bold life. And yes. so and then my dad has taught me a lot about hustle and grind uh, about just uh, working your tail off and loving people and just connecting with people. My dad's mm-hmm. really good at just knowing everybody. Right. Like anything, like he's the mafia. Like he just, <laughs> he's connected to everyone. And so he's been a huge influence in my life. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to plant a church in the same city as him. So I, I get to learn from my dad every single day. Right. Uh, he gets to uh, still uh, bring, uh, discipline me, you know, like say he, like, he's just real, like, Hey, Trey, yeah. you're not doing this. Don't do that. You know? So it's huge influence on my life. Right. Big time. That's awesome. Man. That's awesome. I think, I think it's great when you have family, especially that's in the ministry and stuff that can really help you out in that. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Right. So I, go, go ahead. Yeah. You're just super helpful. Yeah. So I know, uh, being a pastor, preparing a message each week can be a daunting task. Yeah. I know sometimes, I mean, my main speaking day is on Wednesday nights to my youth. And sometimes I'm sitting there on Tuesday going, I, I have no idea what I'm talking on tomorrow. Uh-huh. Um, so w- what do you think your personal time with God looks like? Whether that be like your study or your you know, quiet time, uh, what's that look like to you? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I think people need to talk about this more. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, man, that's kind of when really in junior high, God took a hold of my heart. Not only was I praying for my spiritual gift, but I was diving in the book. Like I, uh, between, like, I couldn't wait to get my math done in class. In seventh grade, I was like, hurry up so I can read my Bible. Um, So I really believe the power of God's word. Actually, so uh, I've done several, every year I kind of change up a little bit of like, as far as the plan, Mm -hmm. I always tell people you need to, you know, you need to make sure you have the same place. That's helpful for me. So I actually read right here every morning. Um, the same, uh, you need to have a plan or else you don't know where to go. And so actually I, uh, just had, um, it's a CSB. I'm super into that new translation. And so uh, this is called the disciple study Bible and, um, Rob Gallaty. Yeah. He has a couple of great books on discipleship that I bring, um, my people through. It's called growing up. Anyways, he has this uh, plan called the F260 plan. And in fact, this Bible, like, it's cool. It has notes for the F260 plan all the way through. But in other words, uh, there's 260 weekdays in a year. And so it's a, it's the 200, I I, I think I, I have this right. It's the 260 most important passages in the Bible, as far as like helping share the whole grand narrative. Yeah. And so, um, 
Although I don't, I think it's more than 260 because every day it's like two chapters or one. So I don't know how many, but over 260 days. So like in Genesis, um, it doesn't show all of Genesis, but it shows a lot of Genesis right. and it skips some books. So anyways, I super love it. What I love about it right now is that I'm going through, I, I love to read it first thing in the morning. I love to get my mind uh, started right. Yeah. But it's really cool with this F260 plan that I'm doing this year. It has memory verses to couple with every single week. Nice. Um, and so nice. I think something as adults, it's funny, like I was in Awanas, like as kids, memory verse, memory verse, memory verse. <laughs> But adults don't really emphasize scripture memory, and right. we need it more than a kid. We, need, uh, we need to have God's word hidden in our heart when we're tempted with sin, and yeah. when we're, you know, all sorts of things, and just uh, to meditate on Him. And so I've been using uh, the F two sixty plan this year. I've done a lot of one year reading plans. Um, those actually work for me. A mm -hmm. lot of people it doesn't, and that's totally like I don't. That's just how I'm wired. Yeah. Uh, in high school, I actually read. Have you ever heard of B90X? So you can read the whole Bible in 90 days? No, I haven't, but that sounds it's, crazy. I did it in 30 because I was super competitive. I was like, yeah. bring it on. And it was just, it was amazing. It's so, I, if yeah. you're crazy like that, I suggest it because it's so cool to see how it all fits together. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do that. So I read a, a, a reading plan, I do a memory verse, I journal it out. Um, and, okay. But then the other thing I do is I love to pray through a psalm. So, uh, so I take the today. So today is January 12th. So I go to Psalm 12. And then if that, if that chapter seems like, okay, that'll be a good chapter to pray through today. I pray through it. If not, I add 30. So I go to Psalm 42 and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, yeah. and it really works out. It makes you cover all of Psalms every month. Uh, at least to see which ones, uh, and, and I, I just love praying through them, if that makes sense. Right. So I see something and then I just pray through it. I, there's, I don't know if you ever heard Donald Whitney. Uh, he's super influential for me. He's from, um, he has, he goes to California Baptist a lot, uh, mm -hmm. to, to teach. Um, but anyways, he teaches people how to pray through the Psalms. So like, um, I'll show you an example um, I mean, even so, in Psalm 12, verse 7, it says, You, Lord, will guard us. You will protect us from this generation forever. And then I just start praying, God, thank you so much that you guard me. Um, here's the things in my life I need protection from. God, would you give me grace in the midst of that? So that's kind of how I go through it, verse by verse. Sometimes I skip verses. Other times I sit at one verse and just pray that over and over. And that's super, that's been helpful for me. There's a, a quote, um, man, I don't know, I don't remember who said it, but it says a lot of us, our, our heart is cold to scriptures because it wasn't first warmed by meditation. Right. And so I think wow. meditating on the Psalms and thinking those things through, for me, really gets my heart ready and prepared to receive God's word and, right. and to really um, just digest it, if that makes sense. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and what I do currently is I kind of separate quiet time from study prep time. So I always just do the plan in the morning and then I, my study for my sermons is, is like the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, at our church, I teach the grow class, which is talking about, you know, Bible study and prayer and tithing and stuff. Um, yeah. And I always encourage my people to separate your quiet time from your study time. Like, you know, mm -hmm. in your study time, you're studying about God in your quiet time, you're spending time with God and it's, it's kind of yeah. different. Yeah. And that's hard for me. Like I'm a, uh, I'm an achiever. Like I love tasks getting done. And mm -hmm. so I have to be really disciplined to be like, so I have to, like, it's easy for me. Like, Ooh, it'd be great to get ahead of on my sermon today. Yeah, Let me, yeah. do but I'm like, no, I need to. And I know people who can just sit in their sermon text and they're great. That's great for them, but it doesn't yeah. work for me. Yeah. No, for my quiet time, I can't even take the whole Bible. I usually write out a verse on, in my journal and that's what I'll stick with. Right yeah, if not, I'll keep reading and then I'll lose my whole quiet time. So yeah, I, I agree yeah. with that one. <laughs> right. On. Um, it, it's funny you mentioned the memory verses too, because that's something my pastor is really passionate about. And this year, our goal actually is he's breaking down his sermons to uh, we're calling the series one word, and our goal is to give uh, our congregation you know one memory verse a week. So hopefully, at the end of the year, we'll have fifty two memory verses that that we remember. And uh, uh yeah, it's really like, and I preach uh, pretty regularly, so it's really narrowing down like what we're preaching on. We're sticking it to like one word and, you know, one main verse. And of course, we'll have other scripture to support it and stuff. But so, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I agree with the whole memory verse thing. It, it's I've truly heard of this app. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. It's called Verses app. There's, it's all oh, about yeah, like yeah. that. 
icon right there. I love it, man. It's so it totally helps me memorize scripture. It? it gives you different ways. Like you tap to reveal, you can play it out loud, you can type it out, you can do a word bank. It's just different yeah. ways to get your mind to remember the verse. It's awesome. Right. So that that uh, it's called verses. Was that right? It's just called verses, and mm -hmm. it's super like blue, light blue and green. It's like all but it's a bunch of circles on the on the app okay. icon. I will I will leave uh, a link to that down below too. And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, you were talking about F260. I believe there's also an F260 devotional on the Uversion Bible app. There is. Yeah. So I will leave that link down below too. Awesome. Because uh, actually I did see that one and I, I almost did that one this year. Um, mm -hmm. And then I decided I'm, I'm, I'm in a group called Dad Tired with uh, several Christian dads. And cool. they're like, oh, let's all read the Bible in a year together. So I just jumped in one of the you know, year Bible reading groups with them. Cool. And I'm going to do better than I did last year. Last year, I, I fell off the wagon around 70 days, but this year, nice. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I believe it. Yes. <laughs> right on. Respect. Yeah. But, okay, cool. Um, so personal time. All right. So you, we've touched on this a little bit so far, but what do you think uh, to you living a, a bold <laughs> life looks like to you? Yeah. So boldness does not equal obnoxiousness. Okay. Agreed. So, Agreed. Um, that's a big one for me. In junior high, I was a little bit on the obnoxious side of things because uh, I was just bold for my faith. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's something that I've continued to try to try to really figure out. Um, I love like uh, the bold life. Really, what I, I tell our people like you need, first of all, take care of yourself. Genuinely love Jesus. Like fall in love with Jesus and get in his word and just find how good, like how, oh man, he's so good. Like blessed are those who take refuge in him, right? Because yeah. you taste and see that he's good. Uh, but from that, the overflow, we should naturally bring up Jesus all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I love, uh, have you ever heard of Dare to Share with Greg Steer? Oh yeah, yeah, Dare to Share, I love yeah. him. I was going to say you're a youth pastor, so yeah. probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so actually when I was in high school, I learned a lot from Dare to Share. My youth yeah. pastor, Stacy Ford, taught me a lot about that. And so a lot of it is like those watershed moments, those forks in the road where you can take that moment and clearly bring up spiritual things, or you can just deny it. So I really encourage myself and my people, every time there's that fork in the road, take that, you know? And so uh, another thing I, I think about the bold life is to also be very uh, um, interested in, in them. So like what I love doing is first asking them what they believe and right. really just figuring them out and caring for them, just like genuinely loving them, you know? Right. And so, like, I love conversations with LDS, uh, which are Mormons, by the way, and uh, and atheists, because, like, I just want to know what they believe. Like, I want to, and I, and I think I know, and I'm getting better and better, but everybody has their own perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I think being bold is kind of just using your gifts to point to the giver. So, like, for me, uh, and, and I don't think it's always, I don't know, man, it, it's, I think people are wired differently, so boldness kind of comes out differently with personality. Uh, right. But for like a big reason why I started my YouTube channel is I really want to be a, a witness about what a pastor what a pastor looks like. And a lot of pastors they think, oh, it's just all so rigid and you know not normal, and you don't you can't have fun. So a lot of my blog is dedicated just to having fun with my family. Uh, just kind of genuinely just talking about things I'm going right. through, showing vulnerabilities, showing how I struggle. I think like we witness by showing our struggle. Like that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So that's something I love doing with uh, my, my blog is uh, I have all – I have – thankfully, I, I didn't brand myself of just like just follow me if you're Christian. So right. I have a lot of non-Christians. In fact, I have non-Christians who support me on Patreon. Right. And it's the coolest thing ever. And uh, we just have normal, authentic conversations, and I'm not shoving it down their throat. However, I do want to make sure they, they know me. I want to make sure they know, like, Jesus, like, my whole, uh, my life statement, my why, and it's on my YouTube channel, is I wake up every day yeah. to inspire and inform others that Jesus is better. And so I try to do that through my gifts. I try to do that through YouTube. I try to do that through my normal conversations. I try to share the gospel. Like, I think the gospel, um, you can share it to your wife. Even though she believes yeah. in the gospel, you are exemplifying what the gospel looks like. Mm -hmm. And so just being bold just means um, just genuinely loving Jesus. And you just can't help but speak of what you've seen and heard, right, right. in Acts, Acts 4. And so that's kind of the mentality. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that definitely. Yeah. That, uh, I'm super passionate about that. Um, and I, again, I used to be that obnoxious one. And right. people, by God's grace, people were saved. But I'm like, man, I it's possible. 
shirt like okay you know like it's just like i was like ah like <laughs> no jesus you know? so yes. um it's part of me misses that a little bit uh oh yeah uh, you know i almost went to on the other side and i'm balancing it back out oh yeah well i mean i can testify growing up i wasn't a christian and i'd i'd encountered mm. the obnoxious christian and yeah and that's probably i don't know that that that's gave me a false sense of who god was uh yeah. is when i encountered that christian so I definitely agree. Being bold is not being obnoxious. That Jesus yes. says that we'll be known by our love. You know, mm -hmm. so I I love the phrase "census of divinitatis." I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Yeah, it's uh, John Calvin coined it, but it's Latin. Mm -hmm. But it's saying every single person in the world has a sense of the divine. Mm -hmm. So they 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 operate. They don't admit it, but they're doing things because they they. Are, you know, the image of God is hardwired into them. Yeah. So what yeah. I'm doing is saying, hey, why do you do that? Do you recognize you do that because you're creating the image of God? Or do you recognize like, oh, so I love to find things we agree on, but yeah. then show them how God and Jesus is actually bring like as a better full picture of why you do those certain yeah. things. Okay. Next question would be, uh, so what one thing do you think has influenced you most in your faith, whether it's like a book, a conference? Uh, mm -hmm. ministry and we'll, we'll exclude the Bible for you know obvious reasons oh, <laughs> yeah. um, man there's so many answers to that there's different mm -hmm. seasons of my life uh, where God really molded me um, a quick one is passion uh, 268 yeah. generation uh, that's uh, you know a college ministry you know with yeah. Lou Giglio yeah. and called them I went to uh, three of them during my college years and that was just hugely informative for me there's so many moments like when Francis Chan spoke um, about missions, when John Piper spoke about the glory of God and us enjoying him, uh, when Louis Giglio talks about not being obnoxious, but being bold for your faith, being fearless, all those sorts of things are really, especially my college years, were super formative for me. It was great to see other college students get together. It really opened my eyes to see, wow, college students, we have such a great opportunity to do so much good. And so that's kind of what influenced my ministry at church planting uh, now is connecting with college students. Uh, but I would say, honestly, um, California Baptist uh, was like the biggest way that grew me in my faith yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and really helping me see um, the whole counsel of God's word and, and learning about the history of the church, learning about Greek. Like I'm obsessed with Greek now. I took three years of it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And uh, all those things, uh, it was just super informative for me. I'm so thankful I went through that season. I was really pushed on a lot of my views and I was able to change some of them or mold it, make it better. It was just a huge, great season of my life. So if I had to pick one, I would say California Baptist University was just so good in helping form my thoughts and kind of the trajectory of what my, the rest of my life will look like. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. So go to CBU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, actually talking about passion, uh, one of my students, uh, when he got out of my ministry, when he entered in college, he went to Passion, and he told me all about it. I was super jealous, um, but but yeah, he said it was amazing. It was. I'm actually super depressed because I'm about to turn 26, which yeah. means I'm officially not in the age range for Passion, yeah. and that makes me feel so old. I, <laughs> it's I like, no! <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm 27, and I'm like, oh, three years away from 30. No. Oh, and, dude, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going downhill fast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and one of my leaders, like all our leaders seem to be like 10 years apart. So I have leaders that are, I think they're 37 now and they're like, shut up. And I'm like, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> but, so but then I have leaders that just graduated a couple years ago and we brought them back in as leaders and they just got married uh, and they're like 21, I think. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, shut up. <laughs> Isn't it weird how that's like so young now? It's like, I feel like yeah. I feel like I'm 21, but I'm yeah. not. I feel I like get, I am too, until I get out there playing basketball with teenagers, and I'm like, I'm not 21 anymore. I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. Okay, so uh, what would you like to, a lot of my viewers are probably going to be, you know, new to the Christian faith, or just trying to get, you know, back into the swing of things, trying to get to following Jesus pretty hardcore. What exactly would you leave them with? What uh, encouragement would you give them? Yeah, I would actually encourage them to super uh, to engage in your content for a couple of reasons. One, um, it helps you. Like, uh, I, I believe in what you're doing, and if the more people engage with your stuff, the more it'll actually show up on other people's news feeds. Yeah. So, like, honestly, a great way, like, for your viewers to share the gospel is to click that like button and to comment because it actually helps spread what you're doing. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, I would love to see your viewers ask questions on your page. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as much as possible. I think it'll help you. I think it'll help them. I think you got great content. Uh, so yeah, engage as much as possible. It's super, like, I want them to know it's super hard, uh, to make it on YouTube. It's super hard to, um, really start getting a platform. Uh, at like for me, I, I, I got semi lucky, uh, Casey Neistat shouted out that my good friend, Dustin, he wasn't my friend before, but I became his friend after he got shouted out. He's a, he's a Christian. Um, and, and so I just hit him up on Instagram and said, Hey, I'm so thankful that you got the shout out. I believe God put you in this position, use your platform for Jesus. And then, um, I don't know if you saw this, but it was a super crazy small world. Uh, Dustin got invited to New York City with Casey Neistat to hang out uh, for a Samsung event. And, and Dustin hit me up, and I got invited to go. So I got to meet Casey. I got yeah. to meet all the big YouTubers in New York City just in October. Um, but through his shout-out, I was able to jump up in a lot of subscribers. Yeah. Um, and yeah. But it's a hard grind. And so, uh, yeah, so any any yes. any way yes. viewers can help you and your content is big because uh, it's a slow process. YouTube is super populated, but we don't have it like we don't have anything like what you're doing. So not enough of it, at least. So yeah, engage in your stuff as much as possible, viewers. What he's doing is great. Make sure you keep doing that. Yeah, I think that's big advice. Man, thank you. Thank you so much. And I did well, actually watch that that vlog. I watched. I've watched several of your vlogs. Um, actually, sweet. I think I'm pretty caught up actually. Man, I, nice. and, and I'm like you though, before like I started YouTube, I never watched vlogs, but then I got yeah. stuck watching Casey Neistat and, uh, I don't know. Do you know who Alejandro Reyes is? Good friend. Yeah. 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 He, he shouted you out in, uh, uh, some group I'm in and, uh, and oh, some oh. Facebook group. And that's how I found your channel and started uh, getting into your content, man. So I didn't even know world. he did that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was like some church marketing group or something, and people were like, oh, what's good Christian YouTube channels? And he said, he actually said, and I mean, he said that people should check you out, that your channel is about to blow up. So, I mean, it's pretty Let's good go coming on. from him. Yeah, he hit me up. I, I found him. He found, no, I found him, like yeah. church marketing labs, all that. So I had him as a friend, yeah. and then he started messaging me. I was like, dude, you're a big deal. How are you messaging me? Right. And it was for fun. So, like, and he actually, I think he's the one who connected me. Um, have you ever seen that Christian vlogger? Oh, yeah, before? yeah. He's going to yeah, be on so the interview, too. Uh, uh, it is a couple weeks ago. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. he, uh, yeah, he hit me up uh, a couple weeks ago. And I was like, how did you find me? And I think it was Alejandro. I think he's the guy. So yeah, yeah. He, he's, the he's the hookup. He's the hookup. He's a cool dude. Man, cool, cool. But, yeah, anyway, my viewers, you should all definitely check out Trey's channel. It, it really is, I mean... He's a talented dude with video and drones. Like, I'm terrible with drones. I, I fly mine into the nearest object. Oh, I'm time. obsessed with drones. They're so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's because I've never had, like, a good drone. I've always had, like, the cheap, like, $60 and, ones. Yeah, yeah. I have the Mavic. It does all the work for me. Yeah. We had a we had a guy come down. Uh, there's a local ministry here called the United 931, which I've done a few videos for them. Just they go to different pastors and get devotionals, and they put them up. And they have a pretty big following here in my town. And yeah, they came up and they shot some drone footage and I was just watching him in awe. I'm like, how do you do that? And mm -hmm. he showed it to me and he's like, oh, it automatically stabilizes and it'll hold yeah. altitude. And I'm like, oh, mine don't do that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. next big investment. Like also, viewers, if you like Disneyland, I have a lot of Disneyland videos. For some reason, those are the ones that get all the views. So yeah, yes. Yeah, I have one that's like 52,000. So I like on my channel, I've made like 130 videos. I have 104,000 views altogether. Yeah. One video has half of those views. Half it's those so devastating. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, come on. And I put some work on all these other ones. But right, yeah. and it's it's always the video you don't expect. It's like yeah, right? it's, after you're done with like, man, this one's gonna bomb, and then the next day it's just blew up. And it's like, I don't I Yeah, don't it's know what funny, happened. it's like a lot of my subscribers are just Disney lovers. <laughs> so right. they only watch my videos when I upload another Disney vlog, which I did yesterday. So now they're all happy again. Yeah, so. yeah. So you just gotta you gotta make a career going to Disney so you can keep your viewers happy. Yeah, exactly. Tough it's life, terrible. man. Tough life. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, man. So as we end here, uh, where exactly can my viewers find you or connect with you? What social media is you on? Are you yeah, on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm on all the things, hopefully. So hit yeah. me up on YouTube. That's like the platform I'm most passionate about. Yeah. Um, just watch. Uh, I'm actually, I made that. Have you seen my movie trailer? I, I would suggest... Uh, for everybody, if you go to my page, it's the first video. Watch my – it's it's called If My Life Were an Inspirational Movie Trailer. Uh, yeah. Go see that. That's a good way to kind of see. I kind of recapped a lot of my life. So 
go see that just to see if you're interested. Uh, but it's Trey Van Camp. I, you're going to link it all down below. So whatever. Yeah, yeah. Instagram, I'm just Trey Van Camp. Um, so I'm really trying to in, invest a lot of energy in Instagram as well as Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Trey Van Camp. Yeah. But then I also podcast. Uh, it's called the Menace Trey Podcast. I do a nice. lot of cheesy stuff with my name, Trey. So uh, nice. actually my blog is called Document Trey instead yeah. of documentary. I love it, but some people totally make fun of me. But uh, if you just search Trey Van Camp on podcasts, you can find me. Um, I'm starting to put more and more content on there. I'm passionate about that. In fact, maybe I'll have this interview on there as well sometime. Oh, so, awesome. yeah. So YouTube, Instagram, Facebook podcast is where I love to to hang out. Very cool. And, and for the record, I love the the documentary, and and I, I love that. I've tried it. There's no plays on Jeff though. Like you can't you can't do anything with that. Yeah, yeah, it just came one day, and the first five people I asked are like, it's stupid. But the next yeah. person said it was amazing. I said, that's who I need to talk yes, to. I need yes. to talk to you more. But Those are are haters, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Man, but yeah, I dig it. Uh, yeah, like you said, all his stuff, everything we talked about, hopefully, will be linked down below so you guys can check all of that out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and keep living that bold life. Boom. Oh. <laughs>